Argentina, they have Krabby Patties. <laughs> On that green. Welcome back, everybody, to another podcast on the Lost Meat Six Show. Take that, Bill Simmons. What's happening, everybody? <laughs> it's your boy, Punish Steve. And um, <laughs> I love you laughed. That was, <laughs> <laughs> was really bad. <laughs> it's your boy. Oh, oh. Your dick away. We're here tonight on another special episode where the last last time we were doing this podcast, we talked, the, the DRE and I talked with Ted Siegel of the Deltas about barbecue podcasting or barbecue in Austin so and then now while we were doing that ah. <laughs> you, you good? she's uh, being punished jerk welcome to the club <laughs> hey Yo. anyway uh, so we got, we got our, our, our wonderful friends Ryan and Gabby welcome back hello and hello. you guys were back uh, from a little trip to the I don't know La, La Patria is what they call it in Spanish ah, okay the Yes. That's great. What does that mean? It Patriot. Means, well, la patria means the fatherland. <laughs> <laughs> so well, it makes sense, doesn't it? It comes from the same word as patriot. Anyway, you guys, went to, Ar- you guys went to Argentina. We went to Argentina. Well, Why did you go to Argentina? Is that where we went? Uh, yeah. <laughs> oh, no, it's Chile. <laughs> no, Argentina. <laughs> we went to Argentina. We had a stopover. That was Chile, guys. I'm sorry, Chile. Chile. We didn't go to Chile. We had a stopover in Peru on the way over and a stopover on the way back. In, oh, okay. So involuntarily are, long stopover. Uruguay? What? Uruguay. We tried to make it over to Uruguay. Did not make it over there because Uruguay? Argentinians are... No, the Argentinians are disorganized people. And... Uh, False. True. If you, <laughs> no. Um, no, we just didn't We didn't get over there. Okay. We wanted to, but yeah, didn't have the time. We went to a dope soccer game instead is what actually happened. We did a lot of things. We went, but we saw a lot of the country. I mean, we went like around. No, we didn't. We saw four cities. <laughs> we, four cities is a lot for Pliff to go to. A, to it's go a to big a, country. To country. In yeah, two weeks. Yeah, yeah, two weeks. Or did, two did weeks. you actually span the country, or did you go to like oh four cities within like a county? No, they were really far. They were like okay. Six well, then to you saw the drive. country. Don't give me that. Come on. There's nothing there. One was like like five hours. Technically, if you go to like four cities in China, you still don't see like ninety eight percent of the country. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. I'll, I'll take that for the you know for what it big. is. Argentina's big. Yeah, we we did like a five hour drive, mm-hmm. and then we did like a like eleven hour drive, but we cut it into two days, so it was like three and eight. Okay. And then we did one more that was about seven, eight, nine okay. hours. So yeah, we 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 went around like you a lot know. of scary driving. Um, Argentina a little scary, Peru very scary, <laughs> driving wise. But we yeah. were in Peru uh, in the driving area, like on the street, for less than twenty minutes total. Versus two weeks in Argentina, and it was scarier, and we saw more shit in those 20 minutes in Peru than we did the entire trip in Argentina, probably. Mm. Yeah, people in Argentina on the road, they, they fuck around a little bit, but at a pretty slow pace, like 40 miles an hour, just kind of like weaving in and out of lanes and stuff. But in Peru, it's just within 10 minutes of landing and going to the layover hotel they put us up in, we saw a woman who had just been hit by a car. And, like, had her groceries and shit splayed all over the road. People were helping her, but it was like, Jesus Christ, man. It was terrifying. And my dad was like, oh, my God, that woman got hit by a car. And the taxi driver was like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, we'll be at the hotel in, like, 20 minutes. And, <laughs> but, you know, I mean, so? <laughs> you went to Austin. We went to Argentina. Let's, th- this is really Let's about. It's me. really about beef. It's about beefing around the world. And, beefing around the world. Exactly. This is, this is, the, and you introduced our brand new segment. Of the show called Beef and Around the World. It's a separate, not a separate pod, but it's an episode we'll have once in a while. You know, because... When beef is had. When beef is had. I mean, I just got back from Seattle today, so I didn't have any beef. Although I had a brisket up there, but it was mostly right. seafood. I had a lot of seafood. Well, you know, I think What's we should, the beef of the sea? I think we should kick this off with... The salmon. The salmon. Salmon beef, yeah. I think we should kick this beef segment off with an offering. Okay. Oh. But the thing is, in Argentina, you typically get, like, a thing... Called uh, an asado, an asado knife, right? Uh-huh. Uh huh. You know, it's like a, it's a, it's basically, uh, it's like an asado. What does that mean? Oh yeah, no, you get these like these. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> a lot of them, Ooh, I'm it's exotic. You, you can just one... have a Spanish dictionary at the bottom, <laughs> Sorry. so people can follow along. Asado is a barbecue, basically. <laughs> you beef it. You hang around with your friends. You get you get meat out and and you you beef it but everybody has like their own personalized knife right uh-huh. you're usually like artisanal handmade uh, the only ones i've seen they make regular ones like you know but no they're all artisanal but anyway oh shit we like to present you oh my god this is steve's beef and knife holy shit that's amazing for those of you listening on, at home 
Steve has a knife made out of bone right now. <laughs> so that it's a is... Is it a deboning knife? It is not. It is a... It is a, it's a steak knife. So here's here's how it goes. Holy shit. Yeah. Um, it's hand-carved. Oh my god, that's, that's sharp. So that is a handmade artisanal knife. That is yours. That is one that we found it in Tendil, Argentina. And what am I supposed to use this with? So you on. use it on... Use it on beef. Okay, but is it, is it for like... Cooking. So well, here's what I was going to say. No, it's, it's, for, it's for it's for cooked meat. It's for cooked okay. meat. You okay. cook it like I I got you one that was kind of big, so okay. you can use it as a steak knife, or you can like serve it. Like you can serve kind oh, of brisket when I cut it up. Perfect. That's fantastic. But yeah, use it on cooked meat. So I got you a big one. Uh, so what that is, you're holding there. It the the handle is a bone of a nyandu, which is like a basically an emu. It's like a South American emu ostrich Ooh. looking bird. Yeah, I don't know what fucking bone part that is. Also, I don't know. I just thought of like Xanadu. It's his hand. <laughs> yeah, it's his little chicken hand. Um, it's a back anyway, scratcher. Yeah, there you go. But it's a it's a pretty, the other pretty, side. pretty, pretty long blade. <laughs> and uh, yeah, you use it on cooked beef. And what you do is, uh, hold on, I'll, I'll show you in a second. So if you'll stand for a minute. Yeah. So if you're just right. <laughs> what? No, no, no. I'll show, no we'll, we can cut it out if it's too boring. But what you do is standing. now now hold hold the knife facing me with the the flap facing me the little flap the this flap yeah okay uh, no hold, hold it flat. like straight up and down other way with the, with the flap yeah. facing me okay yeah that's right so now take the take the, the the sheath and shove it in your pants on your right side and make sure the flap is going over your belt loop just show him after Ryan <laughs> this is fun. Wait, sorry. With the knife. Keep the knife inside. Keep the knife. The okay. knife in the sheath. Okay. Steve <laughs> kills himself. <with> <laughs> does, the, does the flap go towards him or away from him? It, go, it goes away from him. Okay. okay, Steve, just put it in your pants with the flap away from you. And the flap should like go. So? No, like no, no, in your no, pants, like where loop. you would put a gun. <laughs> sorry, I know you're white. <laughs> so you put it in your. In, in what your, is that? I mean, I'm trying to figure out which implication that means. Into your pants. <laughs> no, into not. The, into the pants, Steve. I don't want to put an A. <laughs> there you go. What? Yeah, you put your shirt over it. Oh, and that's how you have it. Like and then this is not... no, it's that's that's how you do it at your okay. asada. So when you're having a beef and you're beefing it, you're barbecuing. <sighs> that's how you got it out. Holy shit, this is fantastic. That's how. You, that's how you. And then when you're ready, you we'll just... make we'll make this like the pod picture of me with the knife. Like the yeah. Cool. There you go. Yeah, that that'll be it. We gotta yeah, you gotta grab that knife, man. <laughs> this is that this is, is awesome, guys. I really do appreciate. Oh, also, this. don't wash it. You only clean it with the um the blood of uh, your your, <laughs> of your victims. <laughs> you just, Sorry, blood of your conquered. <laughs> just a towel. Just wipe it off with a towel. Oh, a towel. Okay. Towel. You, paper what, like, paper towels, napkins work too. But yeah, never wash it. It collects juice. Yeah. You can, yeah this it's, knife. It's you can like season forged. this knife. It's, yeah, it's kind of like a cast like iron a cast skillet, iron. but this minus. Been, oh my god. You don't do, but unlike a cast iron skillet, you don't do an initial season. You just let it season itself. Anyway, that anyway is, that is this our is, gift to you. This is fantastic, guys. Thank you so much. Of course. So yeah, that's that's your. I, I wanted to get you some kind of like freaky and. I really, weird. I really need to pull my weight next time I travel somewhere. <laughs> yeah. Which I don't know when that might be. That's all good, but like it could be like Wednesday. <laughs> oh, <God. So>. Inshallah. <sighs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, so that is yours. That is your your beef and knife. Excellent, guys. Um. So, all right, we're gonna start from scratch. Reason for going. Start from the beginning. You were going to a wedding, no? Yeah, my cousin's wedding, my first cousin. Oh, how did that go? It was pretty fucking dank. It was a dope ass wedding. When uh, it was from seven. <laughs> this is right space. This is good. <laughs> yeah, it was, so it was from cool. seven thirty p.m. to five thirty a.m. We stayed till five. We were early outs. Uh, Four forty-five. They brought out the, the pernil. Okay. No, the pernil, which is about. Was this? It was it's like a cow's four, leg. It was a it was an entire cow's leg. Yeah. Smoked for fourteen hours. Yeah. Slow cooked they, for twelve hours. And they just <laughs> come on. It was probably prepped for two. Tell the rest of the it story, probably Ryan. it probably took two hours to get to room temp. It's fourteen hours. Come on. <laughs> All right. Fair enough. Sure, fucking felt like it. Yeah. Jesus. They just like give you bread and just serve you this like beautiful shredded oh. meat. It was. What the funny thing for me was seeing all these like beautiful skinny girls in these like evening gowns at a wedding, like pawing at a cow's leg with bread. It was a, it was a really good. It, it sounds really like my moment. kind of country. <laughs> that sounds, sounds like Steve would be in heaven, but Steve has this sort of he's got this condescending little view of uh, like I know everything about Argentinian meat because I, I didn't went to say one, that because I went to one barbecue and I watched one episode of Anthony Bourdain. <laughs> Why don't you take a look at the? I want you take a look at the color of this meat, Steve. I'm showing him a you picture. Set me we'll post up for this. being such a. Such a close minded person. What color is that? It's blurred. It's red. Okay. Yeah, not all the it meat doesn't is look very... <laughs> <laughs> Oh 
Oh, that's what that means. Okay. Say I did that. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> that looks pretty, pretty uh, scrumptious. Yeah. No, I'm going to keep this. Show him the pico. <laughs> yeah, the bar food over there is picada, which is like really dank ass charcuterie and like homemade cheese, like local cheese. And like a picada for quote unquote two people, which is en- more than enough for like four or five, was like what, like 12 bucks? Oh, yeah. Food and it beer was are so fucking cheap. Insane. Man. <sighs> Holy shit. All right. So here's the. Cheap wine too, good cheap wine. Oh man, the I couldn't find cheap. a single bottle of wine over fifteen bucks, man. It was so, and it was and it was good. good. It was all Malbecs good and shit. I Here's really, I do like Malbecs a lot because we know how to party. If you like, if you're into cured meats, Argentina is the land for you, my friend. That is a. <laughs> that was the the and the dairy. Oh, the dairy's so damn good. Her uncle made this thing, also. Uh, I know Steve, you're a little fan of pork chops because you're a nasty little slut. Oh. Um, but you know, you know. Uh, um, <laughs> Yeah, what were they called? They have this here, I think, too. But it was a, my first time I've seen it down there in Argentina. It was, uh, you know what, a, those, like, long rows that they have for plows? Those long rows of, like, cylinders that scoop up all the wheat and mm-hmm. stuff? All right, well, her uncle has one of those that was made into a grill. And he oh, was, I saw this on your Instagram. Yeah, he was yeah. Grilling, grilling these up, and uh, he made, eventually... Insta. Insta. Turned into this fucking pork chop stew mm. that he kind of made that he served. It's made with apples, peaches, and onion. Steve's not much of one for sweet with pork. but No, the, no, 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 the, that's not true. I'll, oh, uh, all right. Still take whatever it was, you It wasn't me. sweet, though. But the, the pork was sweet. At most. I'm, not, I'm not a fan of sweet, like, barbecue. Oh, no. it's like, sweet barbecue sauce. Yeah. Nasty. Yeah, bar- there's two types of people in the world, Steve. People who think barbecue needs a sauce and people who know it doesn't. So, <laughs> You know, there are really, truly two types of people in this world. There's people that divide things into two types of people and those who don't. <laughs> and those who dig. <laughs> and those who dig. <laughs> you dig. <laughs> you dig. That's Men three. with guns. That's three. Men who dig. Yeah. And then, uh, oh, another thing. So here's the, the pernil, the cow's leg that was reheat after it was reheated. We'll awesome. post all these, obviously. Yeah, yeah just send, send them to, to me. Steve. So that's after it was reheated. As you notice, it's a little black and a little dry looking. I'm not saying this is a normal thing. I'm not trying to misrepresent your country, but I did not see a single fucking microwave while I was down there. No. Well, it's not that's, a common... That's almost like... That's such an American yeah. thing. Yeah. Or even Western European thing. Yeah, people don't really use microwaves. <laughs> and then uh, I'll show you. I got one more beef. I don't even think you use a microwave. Um, I've never seen you use a microwave. I do Gabby's house. Okay. I got more picada here. Peasant so you got more here. Oh, yeah, like I said, well, we got we to gotta post all these more of the charcuterie kind wow. of stuff. Wow. <laughs> and then, uh, Brand. So, Brand. so good. Oh, yeah. So, the here's podcast the podcast listeners are just gonna be like, What are all these in jokes? Yeah, this is terrible. Shit. This show sucks. This podcast sucks. Yeah. And here's the uh, here's some beef that was made by uh, Gabby's um, uncle. Great what, uncle. What is that? Is that a so that's yeah. a little bit of a bl- uh, so this is the, the piece I got. It's uh, that looks like a oh, it's my mom's cousin. That looks like a like a Kind of like a brisket because it's got that shreddy. It's not. It's a. It's a flank. I believe. Okay. So it's right okay. Next to the brisket, basically. Right, yeah. Cow. You can just Google Argentinian cuts of meat. So they're fucking different. good. It's a little bit. It's a little. But that was another slow cooked. Yeah, it was a little that, medium. That's no, some that's just too. traditional asado. Is that the one Miguel made? Yeah. Yeah, it's just traditional asado. It's okay. on the barbecue. That one is. A little well, I mean, like it's just the way the bark was, the way the chard is on the front, and the the. I mean, yeah, because he's using charcoals, basically. Like, direct heat over charcoals and his, like, you know, the parija, the oven. Mm-hmm. So they had one of those, like, the oven grill kind of deal. Uh-huh. And uh, basically he had one of those going, and it was, it, it got a little, he kept it going until we got there because he didn't want it to get cold, but it got a little, so it got a little medium, but it was pretty, he said it was like, oh, you should have been here like an hour ago. It was fucking, it was dang. <laughs> and that fucking chorizo that fell apart in your mouth because it was made out of disgusting fatty pork. It was so Oh, the sausage, man. <laughs> Oh man, you gotta get the sausage, man. It's oh, so good. good. Man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, oh, he man. will listen to this. Good, I hope he is. Okay. Do, tell him to do an impression of me next time. <laughs> See how that sounds. That'd be interesting. Um, yeah, there's a. Uh, <laughs> he knows who he is. There's. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> he sounds like you're, you sound like you're challenging to a shout out, like a, <laughs> it's a good old fashioned showdown. It's all fun. But yeah, and then we had we had so many different street chorizos. Like, oh, oh man, the ones outside of the fucking soccer game. We gotta talk about the soccer game because that was insane. That was one of the most beefing moments that happened. Fun the entire fact: trip. American hot dogs in Argentina are called panchos. Are they good? I didn't have them. I didn't have. Why do I have a poncho if there's chorizo? Well, because 
they might do better. They might do. They probably do better. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, everything like factory farming. I mean, I, mean, I we drove through the a lot of the farmland and stuff, and there's not a lot of factory farming going on down there. Most of the stuff's like thirty Is there minutes. Any? <laughs> if, if there's any, I, like it's just mostly guy like thirty minutes out of town or more. You it's just kind of just, everywhere just go ranches. Cows. Yeah, it's all happy cows. Not coming from California. Happy cows do not come from California. They come from Argentina. Yeah. So yeah, feel bad next time you eat meat. You're you know in Argentina, you're eating a happy cow that had a nice life. Not one of the miserable ones who probably wanted to die out of here. And then you're turning its foot into a mate gourd. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, there could be a, a thing to be said about, like, the Texas cattle ranching when there's, like, you kind of sometimes want more corn-fed stuff because it gets fattier faster. Right. But, but. Um, so, all right, so that was just the wedding? Or you kind of went all over the place in, like... That was me just explaining the beef to you. Oh, okay. The, and Gabby just going... Giving you the straight, like that's what the beef situation was. Ouch, okay. A lot of good. Oh man, we had this one place we took. I'm right, betting before. Just we're just gonna keep this in line before. Yeah. You, you get completely. You spurg out on me. All right. <laughs> so you went to the wedding. <laughs> you went, went to the, the wedding. wedding. Was that the first thing you did? No. No, that was one the of the last. Was it like that the build up? Three out of the four cities that we went to. Okay, it was city three out of four. So it was. Like, we went to we went to three cities. All right, so just let's let's start let's start straight. So, so first city, city number Buenos one. Buenos Aires. For okay. only a day. For a day. Because that's where the airport is. Then okay. we drove to Mar del Plata, which is about... Well, well we have a better trip or, to Buenos Aires on okay. the way back. So we can talk right. about Buenos Aires right. on the way back. We got to Buenos Aires, we checked it out a little bit, moved on, basically. Okay. Went to Mar del Plata. Okay. Which was about... It's supposed to be an eight-hour drive, but it was East, about six West, hours. East, West, North, South. South, South Coast. Beach town. Mar del Plata is like the equivalent Ooh. of Santa Monica. It's like super beach town, uh, vacation spot. Yep. And then uh, on to Tandil, which is where we got your knife. Okay, and that was two hours inland. Okay, on the way to the next location, so we Three just hours. had like a day. So it was like a giant over. circle. Did you circle the whole place? Triangle. It was like a triangle. Okay, yeah. triangle. So yeah, we went to Buenos Aires, to Mar del Plata, Tandil, Santa Rosa, back to Buenos Aires. Okay, Santa Rosa is what did my dad compare it to? It's where my dad's from. It's a tiny town, like it's dirt roads, three miles across. Like Topeka, Kansas. Yeah, it's a really small town. His graduating class from high school was like thirteen people. And he keeps in touch with 12 of those people. <laughs> One of them died. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> so he would be in touch with all of his classmates. <laughs> had not one They do get Ouija to... boards out when they all have their reunion and talk to them. They're into that? Yeah. Are they... <laughs> <laughs> Steve was like, this is a great topic of discussion. <laughs> well, I just want to know how serious like they're going to take it or how much. I, I, do, I, I do Ouija boards. I can't stand it. It's like... But okay, so so um, out out of the whole thing, what was your the, the wedding was in Santa Rosa? Okay, where so my dad's was, from, okay. my dad's side of the family. And that was the two miles inland, three no, two hours about, inland, about eleven hours. Inland. Are we going? Okay, we should probably talk in hours or miles or hours. meters. We're talking hours, about eleven hours inland. From Buenos Aires, from, it's about eleven hours. Oh, okay, sorry. Because we had to, yeah, we had to go from it, city to it. city. Okay, yeah. So I was just thinking the, the route of like. The beach town, please forgive me what it was called. Mar del Plata, Mar de Sea Plata. of that's, Silver. That's sea. where my mom's from. Mar oh, Sea nice. del of Plata, Silver. Okay. That's how you remember it. it, it the, if you see the pictures, it looks silver. So when really someone asks you for a silver platter that's being redundant? I mean, if you want it to be. <laughs> we had some of the dankest seafood in our lives in Mar del Plata. Oh, my God. Wedding. Okay. Oh my god! <laughs> I'm sorry. Steve wants to know what no, this no, fucking no, 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 no. I don't want to care. I, I don't care about weddings that much. Um, I told you the cool part. Yeah, yeah. We had cow at four. Yeah, and you told me about delicious women um, eating eating beautiful cows. Beautiful cows. <laughs> 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 and <laughs> sometimes I impress myself. <laughs> anyway, so you were in Sea of Silver. Yes. Mar, Mar, is the, uh, Mar del Plata. Mar de, okay, yeah, Mar del Plata. Okay, <laughs> figure that one That's out. The, the dankest seafood the ever. Raw, uh, what's the raw stuff when you the thing? Uh, oh, it's uh, some Costco ceviche. now. Ceviche. Ceviche. Yeah. Not a big thing in Argentina. I wouldn't think. Oh, okay. More. That's more of a Peruvian thing. Okay. Yeah, but, well. but anyway, well, so was it like? Were you eating like cooked well, we raw? Start, a lot of the food is fried, actually. Seafood. Very cool. Weirdly. Yeah. Not, of, mo not most of it, but not, a lot of it. Not that it's representative of Argentina, 
But when I go eat at an Argentinian restaurant, <laughs> I usually do. I usually do like. I usually do like fried calamari. Is that a thing, or that's oh, just yeah. some sort of like everybody does fried calamari? Oh, they just yeah. happen to have it. No, we have what is it called? I always forget the name. Those little tiny fishies. Cornelitos. Cornelitos. And the, they uh, are fish about this big. I'm holding my fingers up, and it's two inches. And you, ju- they're just whole tiny fish, and they fry them up, and you just eat them like popcorn. And they are the best thing you will ever have in your entire life. They are salty. They are oily. They are a little bit fishy. Calamari are called rabas. And is is the main condiment condiment with that chimichurri with the fries? No, lemon. Lemon. Yeah. No sauces. Chimichurri is for beef. It's strictly for beef. Chicken too. Chicken. So it's chorizo sometimes, but yeah, mainly chorizo. mainly okay. just like. But yeah, uh, that was good. We had that like a whole. It's called. It was called. It's literally in Spanish translates to fruit of the ocean. Or fruit of the sea, which, which was is like just the appetizer, a fucking pile of fried fish. And we thought it was going to be like a little sample platter, like you would get at like Chili's with like three of each kind of thing. This was uh-huh. like a mountain of fried you, seafood, and it was like whole octopus. Uh, for our master shit. fryer, um, Eric, um, what oils were they using, and what was the breading? I don't know. Or that. basting? I'd have to ask. Uh, it was mainly like it was the whatever they were using on the calamari. It was that. Okay. It was that so kind like, of batter. Like, yeah, it was if it was it wasn't like a beer batter. Or yeah, like, probably. It was very light. It was very lightly battered. Okay, but not yeah. like panko or no, no. no, no. no. I know no, panko is kind of Japanese, right? I wouldn't yeah. be surprised actually, because I know it's common over there. If it was just flour, okay, and fried, because that's how they make a lot of their fried fried fish. What was the oil? Uh, Maybe olive. Mm, oh, they fried. don't. They don't, they don't fry fried. Oh, you can't fry. Oh yeah, you can't. It's just, it doesn't get hot enough. Probably vegetable oil. Yeah, okay. honestly, probably vegetable oil. Like not like beef tallow. <laughs> I doubt it, no. but uh, no, it yeah. Whatever you're McDonald's making, spring back for beef tallow. <laughs> <laughs> whatever you're making calamari, and it's that because they're all just frying that in the same shit. So. Okay. I mean, you were yeah. probably they they do they have they have a, like a, a means to let you know if it was peanut oil, right? I don't think they're doing peanut oil down there. I think that's too too Gucci a little bit. Okay. Uh, yeah, I think. It's um, just, do they even grow peanuts down there? There's not a. I did not. I see mean, a peanut, peanut butter doesn't exist, so. There's not a big market for peanuts. Okay. Yeah, you got to get like peanut butter is like imported there, you know. Right. That was more of a it's more of a North American deal, I think. But yeah, yeah sure in uh, Thailand. Oh yeah, Thailand. Yeah, that's true. South I East love Asia. peanuts in my food. Not gonna lie. Peanuts are good. Peanuts brought to you by Lost Beat Six. Brought to you by Peanut Town. <laughs> I'm just gonna let that run. <laughs> Don't edit they, any of the awkward silence. They had the they had the fruit of the ocean that was we started off with. Then we went to the uh, fuck man. We had a sharing so situation because we couldn't decide what. To oh get. man, they That's had fine. fucking salmon and Roquefort sauce, which is blue cheese on steroids. Yeah, it's Ro- insane. Like fresh made. Oh, is it is it like so good? Is it stronger in the cheese side or stronger in like the blue side? It was pretty no, it was pretty creamy, but it has that tang. A little it bit has that tang. blue cheese kick. Like, like, but it's not like throat a little. Twist your tongue, you know. It's not. It's not gonna like. It's not know, sour. It's not sour. Yeah, it doesn't. It's, it doesn't, it's creamy. It's really creamy. Yeah, they're really like watering it down with milk and stuff, and it's just they put it on white salmon. Like, where'd you eat? Where'd you have this? Up? Oh yeah, all the salmon's white there. It's what was the pink. name of the restaurant? It was by the ocean. It was really good. <laughs> was it like My a, uncle? Was it on the beach or was it like kind of like? It was a couple English. blocks in. A couple okay. blocks in. Yeah, but it was uh, but then and then oh man, the fucking paella man, the paella. We had paella. It was so damn good. It was full of little sea monsters and rice and saffron and. No, my dad got that that thing. Yeah, your dad got that other thing that was like full of saffron. I forgot sauce what it was called. It was like a cream based. It was like a. What was it like? It was, like a, it was like a soup, I guess. Okay. It, was, it, was a, it was almost it was curry. Like it was almost curry-like. Yeah, it felt kind of curry I know we're, we're in a food... It's, we're very much in the food zone, but... Food mood. We're going to take a quick break to not do any commercial, but talk about anything you guys did that was like fun activities oh, yeah. about beefing it or... or... So we don't have plane for the first time. <laughs> okay. <laughs> that's a step Apparently in the right... That's a that. step in the right direction. <laughs> do you want to reveal your secret? I'm just kidding. Secret? You should take that out. <laughs> Don't take it out. Leave it in. <laughs> uh, we're gonna we're gonna we'll be better than later. we're gonna be better than Venom Millennium. Yeah. Jim and Kentucky are the craziest men you'll ever meet. But when you put them in front of a podcast, Mike's like, "Yo, can you take that out?" That's <laughs> <laughs> <It's> true. <laughs> like, nah, man, I you gotta leave it in. in. Leave it in, my friends. But anyway, it's fun stuff we did. What did we do? I mean, I mean, I met a shit ton of your family. Yeah. 
Um, did you do any like you know, crazy ride on any horses? Did you guys do the gaucho thing? Did you? No, guys we do couldn't. The... My dad's cousin um, has a farm, but she she didn't, yeah, she yeah, know how to ride horses. Or do any of the cool farm stuff because her family takes care of the farm, so we okay. couldn't go down to the gump at all. Did you did you guys bummer. like hang out at the beach? I mean, yeah, but it was springtime. We we were was kind it, of going against you, uh, holiday traffic because we went the wedding was the Friday or the Saturday before Easter. Mm-hmm. So we were when we left the cool beach town, like later that day was when everyone came into that city. Okay. So everyone are left you, like, the small city. Are you you're not are you beach people at all? I'm not. I mean, I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a beach boy. I was born in Santa Monica, so I used to go like every weekend when I was a kid. Okay. Do you like populated beaches? If you or or like secluded, empty, secluded. Emptied. Okay. Secluded. Uh, cool stuff we did. I ate brains. It's yeah, we took good. Gabby's parents to dinner to a or out to lunch to an asado place. So you just oh, go. Oh, with handmade pasta. You just you just go. You get. I was just gonna say we ate pasta and asado at the same time. Yeah, you just order pasta and then like the meat isn't really on the menu. You just Hand ask them like, pasta. "Hey, is this part of the cow still on the grill?" And they're like, "Yeah, we'll bring it to you." And they bring it to you and it's good. And Their specialty was stuffed with what was it? Apples and oh, a bunch of it was shit. Apples and pork stuffed beef. Mm. So that was apples. Where's and this? I'm sorry, I passed. I, I, this is in Santa Rosa. It okay. Was but then, but Fernando, there's also like an all-you-can-eat buffet and stuff. And San, Fernando, Gabby's dad, went and just brought all this weird shit back because he's a country boy, and he just started shoveling it on my plate. He's like, "Try this," and I'm like, "I'll eat anything." So okay. So I had brain. Yeah, tongue. Which, I think in that white sauce. Yeah, but I had pretty good. I had brain. Tongue was good. That was okay. that's, that's what I expected. Let's we'll get the taste bud part. It's, that's a weird. Oh. It's a funky texture. Oh. But yeah, I had tongue, which is pretty much like it's kind of like a. Like it's really a, just really gamey. Yeah, but it, but the texture is similar to like not Cabeza. like 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 I can say this because I'm some, I'm half Semitic, but it's like jubrisket a little bit, like kind of that like stringy kind of like dry oh, yeah, yeah. kind of texture. Jubrisket is not it's, smoked it's, brisket. <laughs> it's kind of like that, and then uh, I had brain, which was a pleasant texture. It was kind of like pudding, but it didn't really taste like yeah. anything. It does. It tastes like nothing. And then there was a, what's it called? And then a stomach, which I've had before, and honest, I'm not crazy about it. The texture is kind of weird, but it's the gaminess is like what I can't stand. I can't stand the gamey taste. Yeah. But yeah, texture is, it, texture is kind of like tendon, kind of chewy, which like uh, I think that's fine. But, well, fun, okay, fun stuff we did. Mar del Plata the was... Soccer game. That was the most fun oh. shit we fucking did. <laughs> so the whole you, trip. is it was it a, a in in league? What's the league in Argentina? Boca Juniors. Well, the well the league in Argentina in Ar- Argentina, <laughs> the league in Argentina is I think it's just Argentinian. Well, uh, no, it's 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 AFA. Uh, oh. The the uh, the asoci- 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 association association de football de Argentina of Argentine. Me and football. Yes, yeah, so f- football in Argentina. Yeah, it's just keep, I'm going to keep pausing. Argentinian Argentin- football. Argentinian. Argentinian football association. So that yeah, no, you don't have to be, ca- don't have to, be Catholic to be president in Argentina. You just have to like soccer. <laughs> there you go. Okay. But yeah, we went to. That a, sounds easy enough. We went to one of the more popular team games, which Gabby's Pam, parents and family are a fan. Most of her family are a fan of uh, Boca Juniors, which is like if you came and saw a Yankees game here, like popular popular team in this country. Or know. like I'm gonna like soccer and I want to like the Premier League or a big team. You're not going to see like the fucking. Let me go. You're not going to see the Reds. Manchester United. Yeah. Or. FC Barcelona. Right, right, right. You're coming to it's, one of the it's, it's like you're coming to the US. You're not gonna go see like the fucking you know Cincinnati that's Bengals. Why I, I'm shitting on Cincinnati, man. I don't know that's why. why I, Fuck Cincinnati. But but yeah, we went to see Boca Juniors, which is a relatively really good te- good relatively well known team in Argentina. They were playing uh call like called Junior FC, Junior Football Club in uh from Colombia. It was an international tournament game for Copa Libertadores. So like the best club team in South America. What's the you know, kind of like the Champions League, like you know, best club in oh, yeah, yeah. Best, yeah. best club in the continent. Got it. Tournament. So this is not like a rivalry game. It's a group stage. Nothing huge yet. Mm-hmm. Holy fucking shit! It was the you'd, final group you'd think it was like the last goddamn game of the World Series if you came here, but on acid and cocaine at the same time. <laughs> it was fucking nuts. Should we we got just... ticket. Well, what happened was we were invited to the game by my cousin. Whose dad, um, my mom's uncle, what's well, technically my mom's cousin, but he's a um, soccer coach in the in the, in the soccer leagues over there. So he 
has tickets to the floor game. What? Stop making fun of me. He has tickets to the floor game. And he told us a few days before if we wanted to come to the game, and we were like, yeah, deaf. And they couldn't get tickets because they had sold out completely. And so my dad happened to find tickets the day of that were in the... It's a small standing section only. Okay. So we were in the, like, peasant seats. And it was, like, way oversold. Concrete stairs. To give you an idea... It was terrifying. This stadium was built in the 40s. It was... Has not since been renovated. <laughs> it, no, it has. It has. But uh, but very little. <laughs> but it is... Uh, it's There's no women's bathroom still. It's all men's bathrooms. Yeah. So which, where'd you go? In the hotel. <laughs> well, you hold it or else you have no, to go... No, you just go to the men's There's bathroom. There's a trough... In the uh, in oh, the that's men's very, room, that's very progressive of them. There's a trough, and then there's backwards, a... like backwards progressive. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> there's no women's bathroom, so it's, it's just a unisex bathroom by default. <laughs> that's fantastic. But then you have the uh, what's it called? You have the the stalls, which are just holes in the ground with little grips for your feet. Ryan actually you went to the toilet. Over. I did not. I went to the bathroom. I just shit my pants instead. Yeah, but we anyways we ended up in the the well. well let's walk them through it from getting to the stadium because that was a trip in itself. So this is the last, yeah, this is the last night we were in Argentina before we had a flight in the morning. At 3 a.m. And the game oh, was at 9.30 p.m. <sighs> had to be up at 3 a.m. So we're we're cruising Argentina time. No, we had to be out of the hotel at 3. Yeah. In the morning? Yeah, the, the flight was at 6. Oh, okay. So you roll up to a neighborhood called La Boca, which Gabby equated to, what did you equate it to like here? Like East L.A. or the part between Little Tokyo and Skid Row. Like not great. Right, it's not, it's not great. I think that place is fantastic. Well, I mean, as I, far they as painted it really cute to look nice and bring tourists in. Little Tokyo is a great place in LA. Little Tokyo is fantastic, but go a past block Fifth away Street, from it is the scary. art district. But go, like right no, no, no. between there. Okay. No, I'm talking about south, like past like Fifth Street, like the like small streets towards, you don't go down. Oh. Yeah, like past like towards towards San Pedro kind of deal. Oh, filthy goblins. Yeah, the the filthy goblins of San Pedro Street. Got it. Um, <laughs> so you're getting towards that area uh, where the gentrification stops. So, but it's like it's like that. So it's not a great neighborhood. The streets, the cab could only get us like within a few blocks because the streets are completely flush with people. Some of the streets are officially closed off by the police, but most of it's just people walking in the street and you can't get around. You're walking through this CD neighborhood to get to the stadium, a couple blocks. Um, middle of the street, there's just Sausage stands, chorizo, and hot, and hamburgers. Just, and the big steaks and stuff, too. Yeah, in the middle, like, just grilling beef in it in the middle of the street. And this is, not this is like, OG good meat, too. This is, like, the quality stuff you get at restaurants. This I isn't, had, like, hmm? street it, food, necessarily. Well, it's street it's, food. It is, but it's Street food is tier. great, yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's really good. I had one and a half. <laughs> because somebody didn't want to finish theirs. It was me. I couldn't finish. <laughs> They're big. Yeah. Um, but you walk through the streets. There were, like... <laughs> <laughs> I'm so terrible. <laughs> there were there were probably about three layers of two or three layers of security you had to go through, right? Which Ryan was weirdly surprised about because he's racist. <laughs> I am racist. <laughs> so you go through about two or three layers of security, <laughs> and um, you got to show your ID, your your little card ticket thing. They pat you down. They pat you down. That you get a little. You, yeah, you get. They they warm you up before the game. It's nice. You're apparently not allowed to bring lighters in, but everyone had a lighter, so I don't know. Yeah, that was weird. But you're walking. Wait, wait, wait. Why did you think? I'm sorry. So it was three hour, three stations of security for the soccer game. Yes, like Football in the streets, game. like on the way to the stadium. Yeah, that makes total sense. No, it does. But anyway, but but Ryan was surprised because he's racist. I didn't know they had surprised? that type of infrastructure for that. Like uh, for a soccer game, I didn't know well, they're gonna have three where layers. Where all the of money is, so yeah. sure. I didn't know they're gonna have for a soccer game though. I didn't know they're gonna. But, it's a giant. It's a giant stadium. Okay, cool. But the but the you get in, you're going to. Past the st we get it. I've established it. I'm a racist. You go to the stadium. You get patted down. You do all this stuff. So then you go in. You, you see, you messed up my flow, man. <laughs> there. That's what I do. <laughs> it's all learned. It's all I know. Oh, yeah. You're walking through the streets. You've said that like six times. And <laughs> what happens after that? You're walking past the fucking fire stations. And the fire stations are painted the team colors. The fire trucks are blue and yellow. It was just one. Because they love their one. team so much. The buildings are blue and yellow. The people are blue <laughs> the and yellow. The buildings are all different colors. They're not blue and yellow. Oh, that one street is blue and yellow, yeah. A lot of it was. And you walk through it, and then um, and you get into the stadium. Finally get into the stadium. The floor in the neighborhood that you you go through is covered in most, hopefully mostly dog shit and piss. 
but and like go, genuinely actually covered in it. It's a like lot. You couldn't take more than two steps without almost or definitely hitting poo. Yeah, it's kind of a bummer because I was trying to like like observe and enjoy the neighborhood, but I can't look up that long. Which is also weird because Buenos Aires has tile sidewalks on mm-hmm. the nice part, like in yeah. Europe, so they just hose them down at the end of the night. So this, the city itself is very clean. Sure. But that part is just garbage. Oh, That's yes. the bad part. But so you go in, you go into the stadium. You go up the stairs. There's no elevators in the stadium. It is... Ten flights of stairs. Yes. Right. You go up the stairs and to the very, very top where the poor people sit. We got there early, so we got a seat. On the way up, there's pee in the hallway. You get, you get up the stairs. You get out into your seats. There are... You are immediately greeted in this area, which is not bleachers. It's just steps. Just stone, Steep, like... concrete Concrete steps. steps. And you're immediately greeted by these bars, these big, thick, heavy metal bars. And they are there because when shit goes down in the stadium, people go nuts for goals and shit, and they avalanche, and they push down. And that down, catches the people. And it catches you. And they're every couple feet, and they're staggered, right? So buckle your fucking seatbelts, kids. And I was like, oh, this is for leaning on when you get tired. And then I found out later in the game that it is for actually saving your life. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> you get up the stairs. You're, we found a nice ass bar to get in front of, and we behind, m- behind, behind. We got in f- behind the bar. Uh, although it probably would have been smart to get in front of one. No, yeah, why? Because then, then we... you're at the top, and no one's pushing down on you. Oh yeah, those guys in front of us are pretty comfortable. Yes. So you go. You're, we're hanging onto one of these bars. Stadium starts getting more crowded. If you are sitting down, they're stepping on your ass. If you are standing no, you up, can't they're... Sit down. There's no, you no can't. Room. But I mean, when we originally got there early, we were able to sit down because we were just hanging out waiting for the game to start. If you're sitting down, people will step on your ass. If you stand up, people will sit on your shoes. So, stadium gets more crowded. This place got oversold as fuck. This is... This st- it was area... about twice as many tickets, I think. Like, genuine. To give you an idea, this stadium, like I said, profit. was built in the 40s, but in... this. It, this is the record, but it, but you know it, it's gotten close. Clearly, there's no renovation either. Not a lot, but it's gotten close since capacity-wise. But the capacity is about forty-nine thousand people. The highest ever record capacity, in nineteen forty-nine, was fifty-seven thousand people, almost ten thousand people over capacity. So we're just like, oh, I hope that doesn't happen again. It <laughs> <And> did. <laughs> it got pretty close. It was fifty-four, I think, wasn't it? it was Might have been. It was pretty damn. It was, it was pretty damn high. And then there's like a little a gated off section for the away team to get in, escorted in and out by the police <laughs> so they don't get the shit beat out of them or anything. So we are in this area that's... How much is riot prevention? What? How much is like the riot prevention for like losing or winning? There oh, there isn't any. Is there not? There are, there are police. There's a there, oh, security there are police, police I thought you meant inside the stadium. Inside the stadium, there's no like security like inside of it. There's no room to riot yeah. if you wanted to. I'm talking about outside. Fair. Yeah. Th- no, yeah, there's, there's a lot there's of police, police and stuff. There were a lot of police. Yeah. There, there That's why there's three security checkpoints, by the way. Yeah. Well, yeah, that, that explains it. But I, I just wasn't expecting that going in. I get it now. <laughs> but anyway, you go, the, the game. By the time the game starts, you don't even know it's fucking starting because there's so many fucking people everywhere and you, and there's no national anthem because they're not they don't have the military industrial complex we do. Okay. They just start the fucking <laughs> they just start the fucking yeah, they game. They just come on the field and they're like, oh, are they practicing? No, they're they're playing. Yeah, there's no <laughs> kneeling. There's no like. You there know. is music though, and that well, is... clearly there's no police. There's no obvious pol- corrupt police force in Argentina. Of course uh, not. So. <laughs> but yeah, none of that stupid bullshit we have here where they play. There's the no anthem. racism either. There is. <laughs> No, I love America. Um, love the military. Let's go bomb little countries. None of that bullshit. Just, no, the music know. we have is some people just get together with their instruments and they go into the stadium and they dictate which songs we're going to sing the entire time. Yeah, I said to Fernando, I was like, dude, they have a marching band. He's like, no, nah, those motherfuckers just showed up with horns and drums. They're just fans that play music and they just get together. They play the songs. It's like Harry Potter. <laughs> it is. It's like Harry fucking Potter. <laughs> They have, they have these instruments. They play songs. They don't just play fight songs. They don't just play oh, they're so rude. songs that are about, like, you know, like, th- they have specific songs for specific occasions. They had ones for this tournament, like for the specific Copa Libertadores tournament. <laughs> <laughs> they had songs about that. That somehow everyone knew the words to. Everyone knows the words. People are singing the entire time, non-stop, except Beginning for half, except for half time. That's it. But every uh, but it's it's loud the whole time. Then when something important's about to happen, they quiet down. But they but they're still singing just quietly, like under their breath. And then it ramps up again when the situation the, the tension diffuses. Mm-hmm. But what happens is this band is like a crazy you know 
right, like super fan section that is doing all this, orchestrating all this, and everybody's following along. But they have songs that are all about, not even about the team they're playing. They're about the rival team, River Plate, which plays across town. That are not playing. And they're all. That are not playing. All this, not it's like, it's game. like. Um, no. They're in the it's tournament. It's like the 86 the finals when the Lakers lost the um, Rockets and they just, and the Rockets went on to get like, the shit kicked out of them by the Celtics. Right. But they're singing about the other team, their rival team. Like it's beat like LA. You, it's like, yeah, it's about, it's like if USC was playing Notre Dame and singing about UCLA sucking. So all the songs are fuck you, fuck your mother, fuck your stadium, <laughs> fuck your team, fuck your uniforms. Like everything is terrible. Now that's a rival I can get behind. It's great, but like a lot of fuck your stadium. I want to fuck your mother. <laughs> they have their own stadium across town. They have their own stadium. Is it better or worse? It's called La Gajinera. La Gajinera, because they're... Is it a better stadium, so they're jealous, or is it a it's worse? It's a nicer stadium. It is a nice stadium. Okay. <laughs> it is a nice stadium. But this one's more iconic that we were in. They're jealous, yeah. But, yeah, it's, uh, but, but the one, but the, yeah, they call the one across town, they call it the Gajinera, which means the chicken coop, because their little mascot's the chicken, so. But, yeah, anyway, so they, uh, they were singing all those songs the whole time. There were guys rolling out big ass flags the size of entire sections at the beginning of the game like you, this is all coordinated by just people not official sure. it's like any game though people are jumping up yeah, and this down is, this is nothing new to like the soccer world yeah no not the soccer but to me I mean this is my first ever professional sure, soccer game yeah. I ever went to I've never been to a galaxy game or anything this is not happening at galaxy games but you know you go um, but what was I saying oh yeah so then the stadium it's old people jump up and down it shakes <laughs> it it shakes. sways. It sways under your feet, and it is a it is hell of a ride. Terrifying. It is one of the scariest experiences we've ever had in our entire lives, probably. Yeah, it was great. At but... one point, I was like, "I'm gonna die. I'm gonna get on a. If I don't get on a plane tomorrow, I'm gonna die today. <laughs> like I'm gonna die on the plane, or I'm gonna die today here." People, the, people just go nuts. It's, they were not even motherfuckers. Just lit off fires. Not fireworks, just some dude with, like, some people in the opposite, like, the super fan section just set a fucking torch on fire and waved it around. Like an actual torch. I counted three. There were three torches set off in that game in different parts of the fan, super fan section. That happened. Game goes on, whatever. It's not a great... It, this was not, like, Who a great... Who won, by the way? Boca Juniors, the home team, thankfully. Thankfully, they only made one goal because that was a scary goal. <laughs> That's what uh, I'm getting to. That's what I'm driving to. Did they towards. win? What? Yeah, we won. Yeah. Okay. So... The, the home team scores... It wasn't even a great game. This was not a fantastic soccer game. It was a whatever soccer game. Sure. But it, it's like... I don't think game, it's just like game seven shit, man. People are going nuts. The guy... They, they kick a goal. Shit pops off. It, it, people are drowning each other in other humans. People are using you as a railing the entire time. Anyway, so yeah, you're just it looks like those pushed picture, down. It looks like those videos of the Chinese subways where they're stuffing people in. It looks mm -hmm. like that. And everyone's kind of contorted to make room for everyone else. That's how it felt. Like, there was the entire time there was, like, someone's elbow on your shoulder, someone's foot on your ass. Like, it was, the whole time you were just squished against other people. When the goal got scored, the teenage kid next to me disappeared. He got sucked under the crowd. Later, about a minute later, he popped back up right in front of me. Oh, my gosh. And then... I almost got thrown. My, I did not. I was holding on to the bar, the avalanche bar, by my leg. I had a leg hooked around it, <laughs> and uh, I was able to pull myself back with that and Gabby's help. And um, yeah, so that happened. That was fun. And um, well, what was one more crazy fucking thing that happened at this game? Uh, yeah, that that th th that was probably the craziest moment. Oh yeah, people just like fucking smoke and light up joints in the stadium. It's like you don't see that. At, I mean, um, not what, what's the weed laws as often. In, in what Argentina? It decriminalized. Okay, decriminalized. But yeah, people just like lighten up. Decriminalized, but still very stigmatized. Yeah, cigarettes and joints just all up in that stadium. And they're like smoking in your face. Like I had cigarette. Like I'm pretty sure I got some of my hair burned off because they were so close to me. Oh, I got they're addicted. Just, like, you smell your, the rubber. Neat. Yeah, they're just like ashing in your face and in your shoulder. Like I don't care. Yeah, I got mm. addicted to smoking that night. But there was a... The, 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 Are you now officially addicted to the beef and lifestyle? Yeah. <laughs> I plan to die before 35. <laughs> um, but yeah, anyway, so that happened. Okay. that Everybody's singing the whole time. Game ends. After that, it's like fucking Escape from New York. You get in... You have. We were luckily smart smart of Gabby's dad to think of this. We got near one of the tunnels to get into uh, the... That was my idea. Fernando said not to. Gabby's smart idea to stand near one of the tunnels. We ran well, out... Because what happened was it was a good idea at the end, but 
it was a bad idea when people were piling in. Yeah, but it was... Because we were by the entrance as well. I think overall it was still a good idea. Mm -hmm. Point is, we stampede out of there, down the stairs, more pee on the stairs now. <laughs> You're j hurtling over the pee puddles. You're going down. You go back into the, the shitty <laughs> neighborhood. You're hurtling over pee and poo. You get out of the neighborhood. You get <laughs> a taxi. You go home. So th my question is for you, Gabs. How much was he complaining about the waste that he had done? Like, I'm going to, like, clean him. Like, like ah, I'm going to, like, sterilize himself and everything. Yeah. Yeah, he was like, like Not oh, at I can't, the game. At like, the game I can't wait okay. to get back in the shower and just, like, deep, just depurify, repur and purify <laughs> myself. Is anything like that? Uh, we took a big bottle of hand sanitizer. As, okay. as actually... I know you, because I know yeah. you're a big germ of... Like, no, as obsessive-compulsive as I am, I actually just kind of... What I did to get myself in the zone to enjoy, I really enjoyed the game. I okay. had a great time. I just kind of submitted myself to it. I was like, you know what? People are going to be touching me, sweating all over me, maybe even peeing yeah. on me for the next two hours. Just enjoy it. Whatever, you, these clothes are not going to be on you forever. It's a once-in-a-lifetime It's a once-in-a-lifetime thing. Fucking go with it. Okay. To, and see, I just to see that of... team play in their home field is a once. My, to give yeah. you an idea, my dad's been a fan. He's in his fifties and he's never been able to see them live. So that was his in first the home time too, in their home stadium. Nice. So he saw them other place too. Yeah. So I was just like, after I just kind of submitted myself. That's cool. Oh no, was cool. I just kind of submitted myself to it and everything was cool. It was definitely unique. I mean, <laughs> and all that you're like this game. You keep walking down the street six times. Like, oh, that's cool. Yeah, yeah it's, it's, cool. Cool. it's cool. It's, it's just it's crazy. When, like when, when you when you're from LA to think about like somewhere like the Staples Center mm -hmm. versus something like this where it's just like plastic chairs all made out of concrete, like holes in the oh, bathroom. Yeah. It's pretty gnarly to think of the difference. They don't set shit on fire in Dodger Stadium. You get banned for life if you fucking lit a goddamn huge like sconce torch in Dodger Stadium. <laughs> they would say, "Get the fuck out of here." They would you're probably insane. like mark you as a terrorist. They put you in jail. Like, they, 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 they would definitely do something terrible. <laughs> I don't know if they put you as terrorists, but they probably ban you at least for a while, they and they definitely put you in Dodger jail. Time. Dodger jail. <laughs> they do. They have the jails. They put you in the bullpen and they throw <laughs> baseballs at you. <laughs> they practice. They, they practice on you. Um, that that was the most intense thing probably that happened to us in Argentina. That was fun. My question is, how was the banter? The banter? Yeah. I mean, other than the, the, I, stadium? the stadium, the stadium banter with the songs about the. Uh, taunting the other team, but like Ryan had never heard any of these songs. But then at one but point, was there I any, looked over is, was and there was any individual banter that you could hear that was like entertaining? For example, when Eric no, and everyone I, was singing the whole time. When Eric and I go to like Dodger games, like I remember going to a Phillies game, and it's just like the Philly fanatic has AIDS. <laughs> <laughs> and then there's the last one we went to, not this past one, but the there was a beatdown, the Labor Day beatdown last year, uh, where the, the guy hit four home runs. Oh, okay. Um, and the Dodgers lost like thirteen to two or something like that. It was like Jeez. bad. They suck. Back uh, and we were in the all you can eat st stands, yeah, which is where all were. the and they're just going like at the Dodger Stadium. And we're talking the dugout. Is, yeah, the dugout no, club. No. Oh no, I've, I've been to I, a dugout club. It's so I, fucking dank. I've just did that. We're not, we're now in the kettle one baseline club. Oh, it's so good. And we're enjoying that thoroughly. Hell yeah. Yes, I'm. We're, I'm gonna keep. I'll, I'll buy tickets for that. But anyway. Oh my hell god. Hell yeah. Point is. Um, we were they're in the back and they're trying to like it was a guy shouting to Yasiel Puig like Puig please talk to them <laughs> reason with them please you gotta get your team going man just talk to them <laughs> for us you know like, <laughs> and then someone else he he was pulled out of the game and I think like someone like Kike Hernandez is like there he's like like hey Kike we're all going to King Taco after the game you want to come. <laughs> <laughs> it was one of those like great like banter. Some of the ba best banter I've heard. That's good. The only banter I saw was some guy a couple rows in front of us shout at the away team, which was very far away and behind a gate. And they he couldn't hear him. They just said like they, 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 he used an insult it was basically your mother's vagina, and then he just he went like died. yeah, and he went like this. No, oh, that's, like, that's... He did the the fingers <laughs> in the hole thing. That's creative. And he did that at them, and that was it. Yeah, that was funny. <laughs> that was about all the banter I saw. No, the, the, you don't want to be the away team at one of those games. That's uh, there, there's a reason they're caged off and separated, and they have teams. escorts. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, it's not even a rival team. These are some guys. These are some Colombian <laughs> some guys. guys. The, the Colombian some guys. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah, I mean, what else do you want to hear, man? That's, um, that's, we have a we've been going a long time. We're going about like just under an hour. Okay, I, I thought I, I didn't want to go too long or anything. No, no, we're, we're just good. I can I can cut. Most of that soccer stuff out. I mean, yeah. I'm just kidding. Yeah, no, I mean, that's, <laughs> that's fine. 
But what what is a uh, now we saw we we saw I love, weird I, stuff. I, I want to just take a break. I love talking to you guys on these podcasts. Like I'm hearing like I mean one person saying one thing, and then the other person's just like mouthing like. <laughs> well, that's the opposite, or someone just like. <laughs> well, Gabby's the control because because uh, we need a native, uh, you know, first person perspective. Because I'm just gonna be like my total psyched white guy, be like, "Well, it's so crazy in this weird country in the <laughs> third world." The street man, <laughs> and Gabby's like, "That's not how it happens." Like they have no warm water in some places. <laughs> <laughs> there wasn't a microwave. In town. Yeah, there was no microwave. I'm like, yeah, girl. <laughs> but yeah, I went to. I will tell you. After Where's that, the Vons? <laughs> Where's the Safeway? Yeah, I will tell you after that game though. I this is not punk rock to say at all, but I gained a new respect for the fire marshal. Oh. New respect yeah. for the fire marshal. Uh, so so Gabs, how many times have you gone back since being born? Sure. Uh, I think this was my 11th or 12th time. Oh, wow. That's quite a bit. Yeah, but this You get trip, frequent followers with that? Steve gets paid to go places. Yes. <laughs> it's now my official job. Beefing it around, beefing around the world. Beefing around the world. <laughs> it's your official job. You're uh, basically Anthony Bourdain. But for sound. Yeah. You take pictures of your food. It's the same thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like special Holy Grail spots. <laughs> like, Or not Holy Grail, but just like... like um, I felt like a foodie asshole doing doing that like like when i went to like momofuku in new york i was just like here it is yeah i took a, i've taken pictures of my food like maybe aaron, a aaron, there's only a few places like aaron franklin's it's embarrassing uh is but that aaron franklin's is worth it yeah no there's then, some like, places where you just do it but I, you're like god I'm when i went asshole. to when i went to napa it was a thomas keller's bouchon like i kind of had to I'm like this is this presentation is like so good and i'm gonna eat it it's gonna disappear it's gonna disappear <laughs> You want us to tell you what spicy is in Argentina? Sure. We had uh, Gabby's mm, cousin, mom's cousin, mom's cousin served I don't know. some empanadas. And uh, they had the bed beef. They had chicken. Hold on. They Hold had on. corn. Hold on, I think. Oh, the corn. And they had. Say, say empanada. I mean. So you had some emanis. <laughs> Empanada, you piece of shit. <laughs> there was a. <laughs> there was go a, watch. Uh, go watch the old Grubhub commercial. Go watch them. They have a better marketing campaign now. But they, yeah. So we had empanadas, meat, ch- like chicken, uh, your usual ones, and then they had spicy, spicy beef, spicy beef. Okay. Which tasted like it had about two cracks of pepper on it, and they were like, "Careful, guys." Spicy. Yeah. <laughs> <I was like, laughs> <"Ooh." laughs> like you can't taste shit, man. It's, it was just... it's like black pepper too. <laughs> oh yeah, it's the hard stuff. Actually, they use white pepper in Argentina. Okay. <laughs> well, there you go. It's not red pepper. That's the point. You know. It did have a little it's bit of red. It's not like cayenne or. It had a little bit of crushed red pepper. Or um. Did not. Taste Szechuan. Red. Red. But it had crushed red pepper in it. It had the face. It's not like Szechuan peppers or. Anything that's going to kick your ass. I want to go to a Szechuan place. Uh, So we saw just a bunch of weird shit in general. I mean, we walked into like a Valencian, like walked in on a Valencian effigy burning festival at one point in Mar del Plata. So they were just burning, like there was like Spanish burning man kind of, but without all the hippies, just like, hey, let's burn, shut this shit on the fire. Burners. They're all hippies in Argentina, that's why. Yeah, that's why. It's it's still the 70s in Argentina, if you've never been there. Yeah, time has stopped in like 1978, probably. <laughs> like, oh, the I... biggest bands right now are the, still the Ramones and the Rolling Stones. Oh, yeah. yeah. Like, unironically. Yeah. And My then... cousin's wedding was slightly Beatles-themed. <laughs> yes. There and was a Beatles undertone. That, that is one of those things where I kind of, like, when I saw, I mean, you, you, you've had, like, your ear... Or your pulse, you've had a pulse on the the music scene down there. It's kind of still very, like... Old school. R- rocky roll. Yeah. Not rock and roll, but rocky roll. Yeah, yeah, it totally is. Except, yeah, I don't I don't understand the Ramones and why they're... You know. Honestly, I think it's because their English is really um, simple and easy to understand. <laughs> I want to be... <laughs> stated. So yeah, they, they have like eight words total in their entire and they're mumbling. Song, so it's easy. It's easy to sing along to when you're drunk and don't speak English. Well, but actually, both both bands, both Mick Jagger and Johnny Ramone, well, the, whichever Joey. the singing one Joey, was. whatever the singing one Joey. was, the, the awkward tall dude is probably Johnny not Ramone. living anymore. He's not. He's not living anymore. He's he's dead. No, they're all dead now, right? I thought the drummer dead? was still alive. Oh. oh, I don't know. All the original ones are dead. Okay, so like cool jo- yeah, both Joey and Mick Jagger have like the ability to 
not understand a word they're saying <laughs> on top of having simple lyrics. <laughs> Yeah. Cause like I can't stand a, you know like I think of I I think of like like one of my favorite albums is Exile on Main Street, and I know the melodies but I can't sing the actual words. Ryan does a really good Mick Jagger impression. Yeah, you should do it. Do I? Oh yeah. Just <laughs> <laughs> do one. Just like do the Animaniacs <clears throat> one. Oh, when it's Jagger instead of Tigger. Yeah. Sure. Oh, my name. <laughs> my name's Jagger. <laughs> really old. <laughs> yeah. Don't let me get into it because then it's gonna get weird. Yeah. It is. But yeah. Anyway, I don't know. We saw a lot of crazy shit in Argentina. I saw a guy juggling fire in the street. There was a guy. Like standard like Venice Beach. No, but he would. Some money. What he would do is this weird thing. He would go like the sidewalk. Speak Spanish while doing it. it yeah. Crazy. Fucking insane. <laughs> no, he would juggle fire. He would juggle fire. He on, dropped it once. On this guy the, in Venice did that, but he was speaking English. On <laughs> the sidewalk. He would juggle fire on, the, on an intersection, on the sidewalk. The light would be red, and he would stand there on the sidewalk juggling. Uh-huh. Or, I'm sorry, light would be green. Cars are going. Light's green. Cars are going. He's on the sidewalk juggling. Light turns red. He walks out in the middle of a crosswalk, and he starts juggling fire in front of the fucking cars. <laughs> and then he would start to, about to turn green again. He goes back into the, the sidewalk and waits for the cars to go. That was fun. Um, what else happened that was crazy that we saw? So you're like, say like your top favorite, favorite meal. Ooh. And I can give you, you can tie. Maybe it's going to be the seafood. seafood. Hands seafood down. Was, yeah, that's that seafood. Oh, that was insane. Party. Okay. That was fucking insane. Favorite beef item. Ooh, fuck. That, 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 that place in Santa Rosa was really good. Just whatever they cut off. The, the dinner de Oliver place? Yeah. I'm gonna have to say it was my mom's cousin. Ooh, his was good the too. Cow leg? No, no. Oh, that was good too. Fuck. No, the asado. No, my mom's cousin when they made the like straight up traditional asado. Oh, okay. That was my favorite. Favorite chorizo. Definitely my cousin. Yeah, my mom's Gabby's cousin. cousin. So this is all in. Uh, yeah. Also, in everyone Nevada. cooks in Argentina. Like every single person knows sure. how to cook. Yeah, it's rad. That's like yeah. an important survival skill. Yeah. You should all know. And how to social do it. skill. Yes. Yeah, it's not hard. It's not hard. It's not hard to cook. Anyone who tells you that it's hard to cook, did you, did you check out any markets? Like like food did, markets? Did you go to like the like local town square market, whatever? Oh, oh they yeah. have they have um. Uh, what what was the Pringle flavor? That pork. Yeah, they had a ha- they had like they had like smoked ham flavored Pringles, smoked ham hock flavored <laughs> Pringles, and I really wanted to bring some back, but they only had the giant cans that wouldn't fit in my suitcase, like the mm. big ones. Didn't have enough room. But I wish I had a little can. Yeah. Those are uh, got some gnarly Pringles flavors. There was a no, but if you're talking about markets, like in every pretty much every town that we went to, that like the town square, everyone that I saw, every town that we I saw, would had like a town square full of like artisans that would set up on the weekends, or I bought like your knife and stuff. Yeah, they have jewelry. I got some cool rings. Yeah, updated. And this was this knife was bought where? It was Tendil. bought in Tendil, Tendil, which is actually where my mom's um, my mom's mom's side of the family is from. It is also where it's Juan beautiful. Martín del Potro is from, who is the fifth or sixth ranked tennis player in the world, and the president of Argentina is from uh, there, Macri. Ryan, we also did not talk about any of the desserts. Holy shit. The dairy is fucking insane, man. Their, like, goddamn, like, Baskin-Robbins tier ice cream is, like... like everywhere, chain store, generic ice now, cream. Now, I know there's, like, a lot of... T- do they go, like, gelato style? No, they, they just do, like, straight up, like, artisanal, slow-churned... Handmade ice cream, <laughs> like because the dairy, the 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 dairy is. <laughs> I was doing a funny thing. Sorry, because like, I got stopped in the middle of my sentence. I was like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this like sort of like half like aroused, like, like stop, no, stop. Let me get it later. Uh, get it here. All right. They're Baskin Robbins tier ass ice cream. You just said that again. Just I didn't it, finish it because you guys interrupted me. I finished the story. It's all really good. <laughs> I finished it. Yeah, well, the ice cream's fucking insane. Is it richer? Is it? It's just better. Everything. Because the milk's all locally sourced. Everything's like slow churn and whole. made on the camp. Yeah, whole milk, everything. Cream. Soil to plate. So, it's organic. They have Soil. Lucid, like, or better yet, non organic. No, I, well, that's what I was telling Ryan. Like, all the food there is free range organic because everything's Cause local. Because it's, it's not even like. It's cheaper to, like, <laughs> grow everything there than it is to actually. I'm actually really stuff. happy of all those things with it. Like, there's no microwave and stuff. I'm really glad he said, 
it's, everything's free range organic, and it's not because it's like a marketing ploy. No, it's just like it's the it's only way it's to do there. it. It's like that's all we got, dog. <laughs> like imported shit is so expensive over there. Yeah. Like you think you're gonna get Kellogg's ice cream? No. Kellogg's ice cream. I mean cereal. <laughs> <laughs> they eat their cereal with yogurt. Oh yeah, they eat their cereal with. We eat their, our cereal with. Uh, it's like you between people. a yogurt and a milk. It's like it's it's like, it's like thick milk. It's like half rotten milk. Yeah. Yeah, it's kind of like churn curdled looking. It's not. It's delicious. It's yeah, great. yeah. It's teasing on that. I got. I gotta say, man. Though after like day three, ham and cheese sandwiches for breakfast were old. It's not a ham and cheese sandwich breakfast. It's <laughs> really new. Oh my god. I love this. This is great. Breakfast is. <laughs> Very traditionally media lunas, which is um, croissants like, covered in sugar. And at the nice hotels that we were staying at, they give you a nice luxury breakfast. Uh huh. They often had charcuterie. Right. For breakfast. It sounds like like most Italian, um, like we like in Italy, there was yeah, charcuterie you didn't for get breakfast. Yeah, ham and cheese sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but just fucking ham and cheese in the morning. Did you go to a McDonald's? No. Fuck no. It's like the only chain restaurant out there. Well, but they they because they they'll change like they're different. Based it's also on, different over there. Okay. They have uh they have facturas. They have facturas. Do you pay for the ketchup and ice? No one eats ketchup in Argentina. They do at McDonald's. <laughs> they have burger Dude. joints down there, but we didn't really like all the burgers. Every time I was in a mood for a burger, they had the burgers all have like ham on them. And cooked I don't ham just... is really popular over there, like sliced cooked ham. Yeah, but I didn't really, I didn't really feel like in the mood for sure. Like, that's ham fine. I'm, I, the reason I want is... to try one. Yeah, because I hear they have the crabby <laughs> patty Shut secret up. formula. Up. Cut this out. <laughs> Cut this out. The secret Stop. formula for the crabby patties. <laughs> I still like that. I so. hate it. I hate it so much. Because <laughs> she has to live with me. Uh, anything else you want to know so, about Argentina? S- sorry? The, the, they know the hobos' names. What? <laughs> In Argentina, they know the homeless people's names. There's what? not a lot of homeless people. And they're nice to them. They don't, like, kick them in. Yeah, people are nice like, to homeless people in Argentina. They, they don't, feed them. You know what I realized? They don't have them secretly killed like Ronald Reagan did. I was walking down Seattle, and I realized that did. I didn't have any... Change or cash? This guy's like, do you have any pennies for change? Change for pennies? I go, no, I'm out of cash because I didn't have any cash. Is this a country goes, song? No. And I'm just having like, he goes, pennies, man, pennies. I'm like, I have cards only. And I realized that because we're moving into a cashless, we're becoming more yeah. cashless, the homeless are going to be in big trouble. They're going to be homeless. They're going to be homeless. Oh, no, they're going to be poor. <laughs> the homeless are going to have some trouble begging Stop. for can- change. Uh, but uh, It sounds it sounds dumb. Like a Dahoy moment, but like change. They should just get card readers. So they're like, can, you get, ven, I, can you Venmo Apple me? Apple squares. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Venmo me. <laughs> hey, I saw a homeless guy in downtown on a laptop the other day. Yeah, one of the things we saw in Buenos Aires was uh, was these guys were opening up their shop, and there's a homeless guy sleeping in front of it, and the guy was like, he was. They're like rubbing the guy. They're like, Daniel, Daniel. It's like time to get up. Go, go come on. <laughs> so we're just like, oh shit. They didn't sound like that. Ryan's just racist. They did. I was trying to do it less racist. That's how you imitated them. And I was trying to That's scale it back. Friend. You know what's been great is Oh, like, whatever. Oh. You're Italian immigrant ass family. Hey, I have at least three generations in Argentina. Yeah. Hey, you have any questions about Argentina or Argentinian people? Um. That you'd like to ask me and not right? <laughs> oh, yeah. I almost got pickpocketed. That's That sounds... Wow, you really just sound like the whitest person in this whole thing. I know the scary brown people. Ooh, they <laughs> spoke a scary language. Well, even even oh, like, cool actually, that's not necessarily white. That's that could be just ugly ass American. I mean, to be you fair, get, like, we there all... was a point in time, like, yeah, don't go. Like, when we were in Italy. Don't go to Naples because, like, just have everything. Yeah, in your no, we, so we all... my family's from. <laughs> Explains a lot. No, we all had like money belts. Like, we all had to, you know, walk with your purse away from the street, kind of thing. Sure. Like, there's that's. I mean, Argentina is a third, a very much a third world country. Yeah, There's I had a my, lot of crime. I had my hands in my my pant pockets with my phone and wallet and keys and stuff, and somebody reached into my expo- but yeah, it was uh, my jacket pockets were exposed, and the lady stuck her hand in there and she pulled it right back out, and she thought I didn't notice, but she did. And you're supposed to yell chorro at them, you're which single. is slang for diarrhea in Mexico, <laughs> but not in Argentina. What is it slang for in Argentina? Uh, like crook thief. Because to, cho- to chorrear something means to to steal it. Yeah. Anyway, yeah, Argentina was dope, man. Oh yeah, my whole family was so impressed with Ryan's Spanish. And they're like, they were like, "Oh, American boyfriend," and he was spitting some okay Argentinian. Some Castilian. Well, I mean, you, you had you had a, some Castilian. You had a good caretaker, so 
I think. I did. Yeah, I did a lot of translating. You what? Oh, I did a lot of translating. Oh, come on. Because <laughs> well, some of them was like, what is this motherfucker saying? Yeah, everyone, uh, like, this is my way of Kay. speaking. This is where everyone talks in Argentina. <laughs> they talk with their hand behind their mouth? No, they're just really muffled. Or they the hand from their mouth? Yeah, yeah. like say we had a so like like do you mind demonstrating in Spanish like trying to demonstrate like the difference? You don't mind? What it? do you mean? Like like saying something in Spanish and like how you would say it and then versus like how your dad would say it. Oh okay. So like um, we had a great time at the game. How about something a little easier? How about like I'm hungry? <laughs> uh, I'm hungry. What do you want to eat? Um, Translator wants something <laughs> easier. <laughs> yeah, my That's fluent, a hard sentence to remember. My fluent Spanish girlfriend. <laughs> Um, okay, um, tengo hambre, ¿qué quieren comer? And now the speed and lil- and, and cadence at which your dad would say it. Uh, tengo hambre, ¿qué quieren comer? Okay. <laughs> that sounds like, you know, normal dialect. Less consonants. People. Like, imagine, there's a consonant like at the beginning of more, the sentence. It's slightly more, um, in the zone. That's where I am right now. <laughs> it is. But, okay, yeah. yeah. Right, so, you have any questions, comments, uh, uh, insults? No, I think... I appreciate the knife. That was pretty awesome. You're welcome. I I'm, I'm, I'm hope it was a good, you know, two bucks well spent. I don't know I think it's two bucks well spent. It's really great, guys. I haggled for it. <laughs> Gabby's, you haggled? Mom, Gabby's mom. Oh my gosh, you my ha- mom haggled you, for him. She taught oh. me how. No, she, no, she told me how to haggle. <laughs> it's she, like a running. Get, did okay? Be honest. Did he actually haggle no, himself? No, Ryan well, I had did the, the nerve Ryan to do did it. the speaking. I did the speaking. I was like, yeah, she get enough because I bought I, I bought some uh, some smaller. This poor inf- hardworking artist who was just trying to make a buck. And you, have to, you have money to haggle away though, from right? Him. Yeah, you have to haggle. But he was. He said like, oh yeah, here's how much is per knife. And your mom was like, yo. Say if you give him if you if you buy three, ask him how much he'll give give you one for for American like, dollars for like for American dollars. Yeah. Well, I was like, what? Oh, I know. I asked her that. I was like, what if I use American dollars? She's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Bring that up too. So I was like, all right. If I give you half of it in American dollars and I buy three, will you go for less? Like this much for three? And he was like, dinero de Estados Unidos. Deal, <laughs> dólares, <laughs> fucking dollars, dude. It's not money of <laughs> kind of space alien. <laughs> uh, can I pay you in money of the United That's- States? <laughs> Is it, hey, American dollars. You know what? Yeah, the dollar is very powerful over there. Yeah, and he was like, "I'm sure they would appreciate you saying dinero." Dinero. <laughs> Don't ask the hotel we're staying at. Yeah. <laughs> Lynch, Lynch. <laughs> but yeah, there was a yeah. So I, I I did a real haggle, almost a real haggle with. Right. I, I just love that theme of like. He didn't haggle. My mom haggled for him. <laughs> she told me what she... You're like, under- cut, you're like demasculating his entire experience. She gave me the script. <laughs> I'm de-whitifying it. De-whitifying <laughs> Yeah. De- Spicing it. Are you, are you, are you more... Are you, are you solidifying his whiteness <laughs> by saying, oh, yeah. I hope so. <laughs> I, I mean, hope that's, so. That's, that's what we want these days is somebody to solidify my whiteness because what else are you going to do? <laughs> so was, your, your trip is pretty white. What can I say? So am I. <laughs> Gabby's got to see that movie. You're focusing on your beef, though. Head by <laughs> head, the movie by the monkeys. <laughs> so it's just great trip. Highly it's recommend. Cool, yeah, it's a really pretty city or country. The architecture of Buenos Aires is beautiful. It's all that like forty, like twenties, forties Rococo, like French, like the undulating mm-hmm. balcony fences. It's beautiful. It's like eighteen eighties really to nineteen tens, twenties. Everyone's really cool and nice, except you. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> Don't touch me. (laughs) Don't be nice to me now.